He gave his only son. Please stand by. We'll be streaming live a soon. Sacrifice for everyone. Oh, God's mercy. So am- Good morning. I don't know what day is today, John. Is that the 20, 22nd of February? And of course, those of us who are, uh, love football, Georgia football, the spring practice, G Day is going to come pretty soon in, in April. And, uh, and uh, we're able to say, Go Dogs. Amen. And uh, also, I uh, want to say hello to Dino Cates and, and Catherine in Tennessee, our board chairman. And also to Jerry Varnado, I used to be board chairman, and also to uh, Mary, Mary Blanche Rice for 25 years. was a board, board person, uh, uh, a woman chairman uh, for our ministry. And uh, let me invite you to Bible study in Atlanta on Thursday nights. And uh, let's take a look at Romans 8, 27 and 28. I've been talking about praying in the Spirit. And praying in the Spirit is uh, uh, an exercise of your spirit relating to God. It is prayer. And uh, I'm writing nine books, one on each one on the one gift of the Holy Spirit. I started with working on miracles. And Betty McKinney has edited, and uh, it sounds wonderful. And, uh, of course, the help of... Uh, Sandra Snell is going to look uh, also good, all the other chapters. And so I'm very optimistic that this series of books will help us. Now, this is unsaid and un- unrelated, and there's not a preacher out there except Pat Robertson and that, that, that deals with this. But I think it's my call also to deal with it. And so today I'm going to teach again on the gifts of uh, praying in the Spirit or, uh, or diverse tongues, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. In Romans eight twenty seven, it says this, He who searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. He who searches the heart. Now, he is the Holy Spirit who searches the heart. And so in my Christian life, I have the Holy Spirit in me searching my heart to see what's going on with me. You know, your relationship with with, uh, the will of God and the Holy Spirit is in order, kept together for every single minute of your life. Because the Holy Spirit is constantly searching your mind. And also searching the mind of the Spirit of God. So the Holy Spirit searches uh, the hearts of people. Proverbs 17, 3 says, The finding pot is for silver, and the furnace for gold. But the Lord trieth the hearts. The Lord trieth the hearts. means He searches he, he, he speaks. Now, and then the verse changes. It says, because. Now, there's a lot of people who have different ideas about because. It's a proposition. Uh, so, the next purpose of this, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So, the, so, so let's take it again. He who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is because the Holy Spirit makes intercession for saints according to the will of God. So why, back, back to the bottom of this verse going up, you learn from Paul that if you go from the least to the greatest, uh, 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 and it's, it, it's, a, it's a way to learn. And so if you look at this verse upside down, it will say, the will of God intercedes. For saints, according to the will of God, because the Spirit searches the mind. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit, searches the mind. For he who searches is God, knows what the mind of the Spirit is, what the Spirit wants done. 
And so there is an interaction and in a, in a, in a way to understand that when you pray, you don't pray without the Holy Spirit. In English, in any tongue that you might uh, would like to, to pray, you don't pray without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is an integral part of your prayer life. That's what we learned from this verse. And he does intercessions. For whom? For the saints. For you. So when you involve the Holy Spirit in your prayer life, it intercedes according to the will of God. Now, you probably say, Rick, but what if, why, why does God have to be involved in what I'm going to pray? Because the Holy Spirit searches. If the Holy Spirit searches your heart and tries your heart, then your intercession will be more powerful. Question is, what tongues have to do with all of this? Tongues have to do with this because the spirit of man, your spirit, when he begins to pray in another language or, or, or a prayer language, it is spiritually pure. Spiritually pure by what? Exactly what you need. When you pray with your, with your intellect, you are exposed to your priorities, what you think is necessary, what you think is a need, your understanding of it, especially somebody, let's say, that is having a, 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 a problem with their brain, such as depression these days. How can you pray during depression? Your mind is depressed, you're sad, and situations is no good in the house. You're not able to, to, to even, even pray. But when you pray in the Spirit, the Spirit knows what's making you depressed. And to persecute and to harass and to belittle something like that is a sin. So if the Holy Spirit knows your heart, God heard about your birth, your ministry, your future, your plans. So the Holy Spirit oversees God's plan for your life. It's not something detached. Look, when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior... You turn your life to him, and you think he's going to just deal with it like, uh, oh, let think about that. I don't know what you think about that. No, he's, he, he has a plan. He has a future. He has a desire. He has a want. He knows what your need is. Now, if God searches the heart, he also knows about groaning, which are the intercession of the Spirit. The Spirit intercedes with groanings that cannot be uttered. That's what, uh, 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 and he who searches the heart knows the mind of the Spirit because he makes intercessions with groanings for the saints according to the will of God. And so the translation from the NIV of groanings, it simply means that's how the Holy Spirit intercedes. That's how your Spirit intercedes with a, 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 a breathing in and out of your being to God. God knows the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. Notice the second part of verse 28. The Holy Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. I'll repeat again. He intercedes according to the will of God with groanings. Now this is Paul. This is the Apostle Paul. Nobody, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John would not really uh, consider this. So the question is this, uh, can you be in peace with the Apostle Paul? Can you take his experience and his testimony as valid? Well, the church in Trent, the Council of Trent, really saw fit to do that. They approved 14 pieces of the New Testament. And so I, I, I just don't know how you're going to make peace with Paul, but I did. And after I made peace with Paul, I began to understand this is a mighty man of God speaking to the known world. Now remember the world in the Paul, Paul's days is filled with idols and deities and gods of all sort of all kinds of gods. It was much more uh, 
uh, bound up and, and, and defeated and, and than what is today. You know, you, you're talking about America. We believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Uh, and there's no churches, you know, a large church into Aphrodite. You know, there's not a temple in America for Apollos. What we have done is that we don't have it in a temple, but we are bought 15, 1.5 million children, and, and, uh, and that's an abortion sin that we have. Uh, it's personalized sin, the church of the abortion. Now, so prayer is essential. Hebrews eleven six says, God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. God is a rewarder. As you learn that a prayer language is important, you begin to pray, things begin to happen. So I have to say, Paul, uh, I wish that you all would pray in the Spirit or pray in tongues, but really meaning some will not. So I have to say tongues then uh, is not for everybody. I, I wish that all of you would, but, but you know, so... I give the possibility that in your life, as you listen to me right now, uh, that you are not going to pray in the Spirit. And there's no problem with that. Other gifts will operate in your life. But if you're dealing with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you can't get away from tongues. You cannot. The two are together. And so, let me deal, then deal with tongues, because that's the purpose of this study. I want to say to you, tongues is a foundational gift. Since tongues is prayer, prayer in the Spirit, it's very important. But it's a foundation, a, a, a beginning, a foundational gift. It's, uh, it's what causes a man to become a prophet. So when you go to uh, uh, Paul again, and uh, you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 28, chapter uh, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 28. You come to an understanding of uh, verse 28. It says, in some in the church, first apostles, prophets, third teachers, after miracles, gifts of healings, helps, Governments in dives of tongues. So when you turn it around, as Paul goes from the lesson to the grace, you're going to hear that tongues move you toward helping in church to govern and to pray for healing, become miracle, a prof or a pastor or an evangelist, and you become a prophet, become an apostle. Meaning prayer leads you to go to mission trips. Prayer is a foundation to where you develop your spirit. Prayer is the basis of understanding the growth of your spiritual life. You get that? Okay, let's take a look at uh, something uh, a little more this morning. I hope you're getting this. So it's a foundational gift. Because it is a vocal gift, we use our vocal cords, our voice. So when you read verse 20 of Jude, it says, But you, beloved, build in yourselves on your most holy faith. Meaning that prayer is essential to develop your faith. Prayer is essential to develop your faith. When you pray in the Spirit, you are elevating the quality, the texture, the basis, the foundation of your faith. I, this ministry is provided by hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. When I begin to think about how our ministry has developed in the last uh, 15, 20 years, it was based on prayer. Everybody in our room pray in the Spirit. I pray in the Spirit. Betty McKinney prays in the Spirit. John Dunn prays in the Spirit. Frank Appel prays in the Spirit. Uh, uh, Cindy Walker prays in the Spirit. We don't. Kim King prays in the Spirit. In other words, our, our 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 staff in Brazil, all of them pray in the Spirit. No wonder we can do wonderful things for God because our faith is stronger. 
So it's a foundational gift. Paul says in Romans 12, 3, For I say, through the grace given to me, that every man who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought, but to think soberly according to, as God has dealt to every man, a measure of faith. How can you increase your measure? God gives this measure. Some of us are, have more faith. Some of us have less faith. Rekindle the flame is about to come to us. And so I'm praying the Spirit this morning. Suddenly I hear T.D. Jakes ministering on television. And he is saying to me, don't spice the day of small things. God begins the rain. He called the message the rainmaker. He begins the rain with a small cloud. We're going to rekindle this year. And we are actually going to have a, 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 a small environment. But we're going to have rekindled the flame. And God's going to send the people. And God's going to bless the people and protect the people. We are meeting uh, at the Civic Center on this coming uh, July uh, 7th to, 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 to 10th. Three days. Uh, or 7th through 11th. So prayer is, is a foundational exercise. Tongue to build your faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Without faith, it's impossible. So a foundational gift also because it guarantees spirit expression. What I mean by that is that it refers to John 7, 38. Spiritual expression is when you are led of the Spirit of God and you develop in you a prayer language that has movement, has texture, has quality, has, has intention, has commitment, has power. I don't know if you uh, listen to T.D. Jakes much. I don't, but uh, this morning I did. And I was impressed by it because he would, he would pray in the Spirit every, every, five, every ten seconds. You can hear a little utter from his mouth. Now, you say, Rick, but uh, that's not right. Well, look at that, look at that 3,000 seat auditorium and you'll stop wondering. Oh, Rick, but you don't have uh, 3,000. Yes, we do. There's a lot of people who follow this ministry worldwide. And, uh, and yes. So I'd say that prayer has gr made, grew our ministry in a powerful way. So John 7, 38 and 39 says, He that believeth in me, as the scripture had said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. This he spoke of the Holy Spirit that wasn't given yet. So let us move to understand this idea uh, 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 of flow, rivers of living water. Paul had more revelation than anybody else. I told you that. The flow, the renewal, the spiritual growth. Faith and abundance, joy, peace, and love. And so uh, it is a foundational gift that flows as rivers flow from your belly. You have no control of the river. The river flows and leads you to where God wants you to go. And as you move into that leadership of the, of the river of God, you come into a place to where you don't know where you are, but your spirit is interceding to God. Second, not only foundational, but a communication uh, uh, gift. Why? Because your spirit in tongues leads you to deeper understanding of the revelation of God. First, the foundational. Its base is necessary. Second, is communication channel. What, what, what tongues, Jesus said concerning, let me give an example of, the, of how it leads you and how it explains things a little better. Okay? So I pray in the spirit and I'm preparing a message. And I'm making notes on my table about what I'm going to say there. Same thing. When you hear Betty teach, Betty McKinney, she is writing down uh, on her office her little notes there in a small little page. But man, when she gets down here, it begins to flow. So Jesus said concerning John the Baptist, there had never been born of a woman a greater prophet. Jesus said that. And then I thought to myself, well, how about Elijah? Elijah raised the dead, stopped 
the armies are with fire from heaven. But Jesus says that John the Baptist is greater. Well, John the Baptist didn't make a single miracle. How can Jesus say that John the Baptist is greater than Elijah? All he did is uh, uh, eat locusts, which is what? Locusts is what? Grasshopper, big old grasshopper, you know, a little little ketchup on it and, 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 uh, and, 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 and wild honey. Honey comes from date honey. When you go to Israel, all these date, tall trees, you know, and, uh, and way up there there's a, a cache full of uh, honey dates, you know, dates you can buy in the, in the grocery store. Why Jesus would say something about, like that about John the Baptist? Because all the prophets of the Old Testament covenant, John had more knowledge of Jesus than all of them. Jesus, G John the Baptist knew about the Son of God much more than what Elijah knew. Then Jesus says a thing much more remarkable in a remarkable statement after he just said that John is greater. He said that the least in the kingdom of God is greater than John the Baptist. What do you mean? It simply means that more revelation from God, more prayer from the saints, increases the faith of the believer, and the Holy Spirit reveals, reveals the nature of who Jesus is. Because the Old Testament prophets were, were, were not born again. You know, you, uh, you never say that Elijah was born again had a new nature. But we do when we pray in the Spirit. So number one, a relational. Number one is a foundational gift. Number one is a relational, communicated gift that allows us to receive revelation. And then the third is a gift that accesses into heaven. What do I mean by that? Eternity is not possible to be accessed. Whoever is in hell and whoever is in heaven cannot communicate. As a matter of fact, whoever is in heaven cannot communicate to earth. So when you thank God for somebody that passes and is gone from this earth, you actually ask Jesus in the name of Jesus, and thank you for the life of that saint. Thank you for the life of that father, that mother that passes. Thank you, God, for, for the gift of Mary Lucy to my life for 52 years. Now, the problem here is this. You can't talk to Mary Lucy, but I can talk to Jesus. And Jesus has her in, in paradise. And that is how you relate to access into the heavens. Again, tongues is a, number one, can, can somebody tell me? A foundational gift is the source and base of all spiritual growth, prayer. Number two, is it is actually a, a communication or, or you can say a relational gift because it translates your spirit prayer into the heart of Jesus. See, the only way to get to the Father is through Jesus. That is why we pray, thank you, Jesus, Lord, in Jesus' name, okay? In Jesus' name, God, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. You access the Father through Jesus. He is our intercessor. Jesus understands prayer language. If you go to heaven and you want to relate to everybody there, learn a heavenly language. It's, it's, it's kind of difficult that when you go to heaven, you say, get there and you say, I tell you, how you been, brother? And, and, and somebody might say to you, I don't understand what you're saying. But go ahead, there's another place here for those who can't talk. That's what Paul is saying. I wish all oh, you pray. Now, Foundational, relational, and then the, the third is uh, uh, the access to the heavenlies. It is a conductor, an engine that
that accesses heaven through the power of your spirit. There are four ways that the spirit does this communication. The first one is the inner witness, the witness of the Christian inside. Look at uh, Romans 4.17. The kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. It flows every second of your life. In other words, my inner witness of what Jesus has done for me backs up my prayer language. And because I had this witness, this experience with God, I move to that level of prayer. You see, we want to bless your life. I know you're struggling right now with all kinds of problems and all kinds of needs. I know that you are bothered about all kinds of things. How do you actually handle this? I, I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm trapped. I, I, I have no, no idea how to relate to, to you, God, because... I don't even have the breath to pray. Well, kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteous peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. In other words, righteous peace and joy is a product of the Holy Spirit. Your inner witness believes that God can be accessed through prayer, and He answers our prayers. The second way the Holy Spirit accesses heaven is by revelation. Communication through the Spirit it's not physical. It is spiritual. And Paul had more revelations than anybody else. Paul, in all his epistles, received revelation from God. And so when you want to preach, when you want to minister to others, you know, I told you this morning about T.D. Jakes and the Rainmaker message. that He prepared the message and probably made some notes and looked at it. But as he began to preach, the revelation increased and increased and increased and increased. And he began to preach and to minister. And the flow of the Holy Spirit filled the whole message. And the big tall screens began to rain and rain and rain. And he began to yell and scream, rain on me, rain on me, rain down, come water. Life with Jesus has to have revelation. Without revelation... You become someone that is completely unbalanced and weak and not able to minister. This coming, tomorrow we're going to be here at 9 o'clock in the morning. Every day of this week you're going to be here at o'clock in the morning. And I want you to know that revelation is essential. Inner witness, revelation. Number three, uh, number three is audible voice. You hear clear from inside of you. When you pray in the Spirit, the communication becomes audible. You begin hearing the voice of God. You know, I, I hear it. Uh, I tell you, I, 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 <laughs> I hear it daily. Yes, I, 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 yesterday, I got up feeling terrible. Depression all over me. A cloud, a dark cloud over my head. And I couldn't sleep all night. And so I knew that something was dead wrong and I needed to have extreme somebody. And I began to pray and pray and pray and cry out before the Lord. And suddenly I, I heard, go to church. So I got up and went to Ray Johnson's chapel. Johnson's United Methodist Church, Pastor John Walker, Cindy Fain's husband, John Walker. So I went there. I got there, the parking lot is empty. And I just parked there and opened the window to get cool air because I can't breathe. I, it's just coming over me, pressing over my mind. Suddenly I began to pray in the Spirit. Oh, just pray. Just pray, 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 crying out and praying. There's nobody in the parking lot, so I just was free to pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. And I began to pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and continue to pray and pray and pray. Suddenly, a red truck just came in and parked right next to me. I got out of there, and John came around. I said, pray for me right now. And he prayed. I waited a little bit to go in, and he began to preach. 
in the middle of the sermon about, uh, about uh, Abinadab's house, the ark being so blessed, his family, and dancing before the Lord. David began to dance before the Lord as he came into Jerusalem. And the cloud lifted. It lifted. I slept eight hours yesterday. I haven't done that in two months. It lifted. I guess when you lose your wife, you actually go much longer in depression. But I tell you, that thing was killing me. I began to pray. Now, what happened? I heard the Lord get up and go to church. I hope the Lord told me, get up and go downstairs. This is what you're going to eat. Get your clothes on and go to church. I said, Lord, I've been dressing in black most of my life. Two months now. The Lord said, get some colors. Get up and go. And as I went, God healed me. Now, I feel better today. I feel better today than never before. In, in other words, the last two months, I've been in a horrible depression. Audible voice. I heard a voice. And number four, you have visions. It shows the truth without training or reading or, or, or exercising or, or, or writing a book. The vision that replaces and comes to you through the revelation of the Holy Spirit. When you pray in tongues, you have visions. You know, Sunday before 12, I begin to pray. Why? Because I want the Lord to show me what I'm going to eat. What a wonderful thing to have the vision. I can see the food. <laughs> I know exactly where I'm going to go. Sometimes just go home and eat from the refrigerator. Sometimes be careful. Don't eat this or don't eat that. In other words, the vision of the Holy Spirit increases in my life. When I pray in the Spirit, the inner witness, the revelation, the audible voice, in the visions of God to your life. All of that is result of praying in the Spirit. Jesus, me, oh God's mercy so amazes me To every generation He gives the joy of His salvation Oh, God's mercy so amazes me As I watch the world around me I can see His mighty hand Delivering His people From the evil in this land The wounded and the broken hearted Lift their voice in praise As they feel the touch of His amazing grace Oh, God's mercy so amazes me Oh, God's mercy 